Hello Sabre fans. So today I actually wanted to just show you um, kind of my latest iteration of my Jedi outfit. Um, I know I've kind of done an earlier video um, kind of showing it off in, uh, previously, but I've made a few modifications and adjustments and I wanted to do just a quick rundown of what all of this is made of, because um, most of this are things that I either uh, got from a thrift store or ordered a piece online, made slight modifications as well. So um, the first thing I want to start with is the, the black tunic, um, which goes all the way to here. Um, this is actually just a graduation gown. So it was a little uh, short, um, so it was a, a smaller graduation gown. Um, I have actually since um, cut and hemmed um, the sleeves because I did want to do some shorter sleeves um, for the addition of this, these gloves because I wanted to see uh, the white underneath um, a little bit better than what I've seen before or what I've had before on the costume. Um, and so that's kind of the starting point was just getting that, that graduation gown from a thrift store uh, to have the tunic. Um, underneath uh, this white part here uh, as well as my leggings they're just sweatpants, so a uh, turtleneck and, and sweatpants. Um, the boots, I actually got these boots at a thrift store for about 20 bucks. And they're actually female boots, I think. But they fit. I, I put them on, I saw them when I was at the thrift store. I wasn't even looking for the boots at the time. I put them on, they fit perfectly, and I was like, these are coming home with me. And they make great jab boots. Uh, most of my costume used to be all black and white, but once I got these boots, I started to want to add a little bit more brown to it. Um, so that's why I ended up adding this uh, quaff. So rather than the traditional Jedi costume, that it looks like it has folds of material that kind of go over the shoulder uh, and then tuck in and then become kind of part of this, um, you know, parts that are part of the tunic, essentially. It's, it's all part of the tunic. Um, I did this... Um, medieval hooded cowl and essentially what I've done is I folded the outer part because it did it did go all the way out and just kind of hang over the shoulders because it is for like a more medieval type but I folded that part in uh, and just kind of sewed it up here sewed it down a little bit um, so that it has the same aesthetic of those Jedi folds that the that kind of go over the shoulder so it has the same silhouette but I have an inbuilt hood onto my, onto my outfit without having to have a big bulky, um, potentially very hot uh, Jedi robe. Uh, and then for the belt, uh, this is the only thing on this costume that is intended for a Star Wars costume. Uh, it is a Jedi belt. Um, it actually was for a youngling, um, which is why I have actually had to add... Uh, I think I got two belts and, and kind of added them together. But that just kind of velcros around. Um, this white material is, I'm not really sure. I've had this white material here for years, but um, I think it's just a, an extra bit of material that I used to put underneath. Um, in previous iterations of this costume, um, these have been a little wider. So it's actually covered more of my midsection. Uh, but I've since kind of cut that down. I've just kind of folded it in to make it, um, you know, less on the up and down side of the belt. Really, I just want this part to highlight the belt, uh, and I also wanted it to kind of tie in with the white of my sleeves. And now for the most recent addition, these gloves. Um, I've, I've looked online for gloves to try to get something that, that really emulates what I wanted, and honestly, I couldn't find anything that was within my price range. Um, I ended up buying um, like a Bane uh, Dark Knight Rises glove. I thought it was a pair. It ended up just being the one right hand. And I needed it more for the left hand. Because my character, um, this is a bionic hand. So so it's been severed in a duel. Um, and so that's why I wear the glove and I have the black fingertips on my left hand. And why the glove is longer. So it has an extra three of these straps. So couldn't find what I wanted. But I decided to go ahead and make them myself. So this material is actually just felt. Uh, you can actually see some of the Velcro uh, peeking through there. I can probably take some fabric paint and just kind of cover that up so that it's not so obvious. But um, it's felt. 
And then for these straps, I actually took foam, just a, a sheet of foam, uh, did a few thin layers of uh, fabric paint to give it that, that kind of sheen, and it also makes it to where it's not going to be as, as likely to rip. And then I just put these little gold studs, um, and then these straps here are also um, foam. And a lot of hot glue. All this foam is hot glued straight onto the, the felt. Um, you know, I love hot glue for that kind of stuff. I had minimal sewing. I mean, really all I had to sew was, um, you know, the seam here. Um, and then right here I sewed for this part that kind of goes over and, and straps there. But otherwise, very minimal sewing on this. So, um, I'm really proud of this. Uh, my Jedi costume is constantly evolving, and I think this is really... Um, just not took it up a notch and I just wanted to share you guys uh, share with you guys that I also wanted to show you So I, I did my review of the Antares um, Previously in the costume if you want to check out that video, um, you know, the glove is a little different, but otherwise most of it's the same But you'll also notice I added this bottom section with these T grips um, because I really want to make this saber be as close to a movie cannon hilt um, as possible, and not a specific movie cannon hilt. So I'm not trying to make this look like, you know, Anakin Skywalker's or, um, you know, Luke's from Return of the Jedi, but I want it to have elements of all the cannon hilts, or of specific cannon hilts. So like, this uh, red thumb screw is very reminiscent of the activation switches for uh, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon from Episode 1. Uh, this thin neck with the gold, and I've also, I've seen several people ask me in other videos, how did I do this gold? I put, I've responded to the comment every time, um, but this gold is tape. I went to a hobby store and just got some gold tape, cut it exactly to the length, the width that I needed, and just put it on there. And it's pretty simple. And it's like, I don't know, maybe two, three bucks for the whole spool, and I haven't run out yet. Um, but, but back to the, the, you know, the elements of this hilt. Uh, of course, these stripes are very reminiscent of Luke Skywalker's uh, Return of the Jedi, and of course, uh, Anakin's, Luke's, Vader's, they all have these T-grips. So that's kind of what I'm um, emulating here. And then I do have a, um, I just have some foam here to protect because the speaker's just kind of exposed in this hollow tube. But I do have a, um, a, a D-ring, yeah, that's what it's called, a, a D-ring uh, insert. Uh, that'll come in the mail, I'll be able to put that right there uh, with a little D-ring loop so that I can take the blade out and just hang that on my belt. Uh, oh, and then of course for the little gubbins on the belt, uh, this I think is a digital camera pouch. When I go out, you know, I put my wallet, my keys there because this doesn't have pockets otherwise. And then um, this was a, I think this was actually a piece of blade tube that I just put some caps on and some foil tape on. This is kind of like those little, um, canisters that they uh, they have in the movies, but that's my costume, and then one little addition I want to share too. So oh, just a chrome mask that I got at a Halloween store. Um, you know, nothing, it, it's really flimsy. I don't really wear this out, but um, I, I really like that. And I might do some some spin videos um, with that in the future, but just a little add-on that I share with you guys. And again, so. I hope you guys enjoy.